This is William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The Pioneer basketball season has come to a close, and here to break it down is Anthony, Danny, Jesse, and Justin. You know, the Lady Pioneers had a playoff game against TCJ last Saturday. Anthony, it was a, it was a heartbreaker. It, it, it was. Take it us was, what you saw during the game. It was a tough one. We're going to take a look at the stats right here. It was, it was a really tough loss for the Pioneers. If you look at the stats, Ellie Simaluka, who was really only shooting 267 from three, shot three for four from beyond the arc. That really killed him. The one thing I take away, you look at the rebounds, 46 to 41. It's really hard to out rebound TCNJ when they, got, when they got players like Shannon Devitt on that team. They did, and you would think that that, they would, that would lead to them winning the game. There were some questionable, questionable calls in, during that game. Jesse, I'm sure you'll agree with that. You were on the call. Uh, just a really tough game for the Pioneers. Danny? Completely agree with uh, Adub's uh, analysis. Uh, it, like we predicted, it was a defensive battle, and William Patterson had this game, but in the end, over time, they became a little stagnant on the offensive side and free throws. The disparity was quite huge. Uh, TC and J shot 26 free throws. Yeah, they had 20 foul calls. Jesse, I know you, you were very adamant about this. They had, I was listening to the call. They had what, 20 what thoughts, foul Jesse? calls. I mean, the first half was probably the most well-officiated game I think I've ever seen. And then the second half, I don't know what happened because out of nowhere, the refs were just calling everything. We see 20 personal fouls called against William Patterson. Uh, that doesn't even include some of the offensive fouls that they called that were just blatantly wrong. And like some of the travels and I, There everything. was a chance Yakira Rosa, freshman uh, point guard, who was fantastic in the game, scored 15 points. She had the game on ice with a minute 30 seconds left. She did a nice Euro step to finish at the basket. They called her a charge in the restricted area. I don't know about you guys, but you can't call a charge in the restricted area. It's not allowed. There is literally a rule that says you can't charge in the restricted area. That game is won if they count that with the and one that Yakira Rosa should have got. Justin? Yeah, so the game was very clean from the get-go in the first half. I mean, both teams were closely competitive. It was a tight game. Uh, and the officiating was top-notch in the first half. No fouls. Uh, only traveling, that was the worst uh, violation that was called. And then, you know, Jesse, you brought it up uh, on the broadcast how the officiating was very well done. And then second half, it just fell apart. Everything was going towards TCNJ. Everything happened against the William Patterson Pioneers, and it led to their downfall, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, junior Brianna Brooks had uh, she had two back-to-back -back good games against TCNJ. The home, the, not the homecoming, the senior day game, then the playoff game, she had the game of her life, Danny. Take it through. She had a hot spree, and she got hot at the right yeah, time. She really did. She had a huge game against TCNJ. If we could take a look at the stats, huge game. She had 18 points, 19, uh, essentially 19 rebounds. Almost really, 2020. Almost 2020. Dare I say, chairwoman of the boards right here. <laughs> really killing it. And hopefully next year, as a senior, she's going to be the focal point of the offense. She can draw on double teams, and then she can kick it out to shooters. Jesse? Those one blocks don't do justice of what Brianna Brooks did on the defensive end. She was the interior defender. Everything ran through her on the offensive end. She didn't sit until she was fouled out in overtime. She played, I believe, 42 minutes that night, played all first quarter, second quarter. Every She didn't take a break, and she didn't even look tired by the end. For me, she's a top two defender in the end, Jack, and she's not number two. I, I love it. Anthony, <laughs> you guys took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, you, the numbers are otherworldly. You, you, she almost got a 20-20 a game. Danny, you said the focal point of that offense going forward, the vocal point of that defense going forward, that's, that's an otherworldly game for her. You got to look at her going forward. She's the leader of this team from now Justin. on out. And um, her performance in the postseason, I know it was just one game, but it shows that she can really step up when it matters most. And the fact that she played more minutes than Alyssa Giordano uh, against TCNJ, it really just speaks volumes. And I feel like Justina Cabezas will be looking up to her when Justina Cabezas, when her time as a senior comes, she'll be uh, looking up to Brianna Brooks Absolutely. for leadership. Yes. And you just brought up Alicia Giordano. You know, her and Kai Adams were the seniors of the team. You keep it with them. They played their final games this Saturday. Jesse. How crucial were they to what was going on for the Pioneers this season? Yeah, when we look at what Giordano and Kai Adams have done, um, you know, obviously the stats are there. Alyssa Giordano, 23 minutes a game. She really was the leader of this team, you know, only averaging 6.7 points per game, but she really ran the entirety of that offense. Uh, Kai Adams was a player we've seen come on more late. She even started the playoff game, started senior night. Uh, only 1.8 points per game, 
but in her last three games, she was double digit every time. So she really came on late in the season with something good that Coach Monahan found later on. It's going to be interesting to see who can take the leadership yeah. from Melissa Giordano. My money is on Yakira Rose, obviously leading the offense moving forward, but everything that they did for the program from just a leadership standpoint uh, is just incredible. Danny? Have to agree with Jesse. The leadership is the, the key loss for Elisa with Elisa Giordano. Essentially, the court general on the floor, tone setter for the team. It'll be hard. It'll be interesting to see who steps up next season. Anthony, uh, you're talking about two different players here, but they both had an equally big role. Giordano this year played almost 37 minutes a game. She led the team in steals with 63. But then you look at Kai Adams, where she would come off the bench, and Jesse even said she started against uh, TCNJ. She hit a big three against TCNJ. She hit a big three against TCNJ on senior night. Two very different roles, but both equally big leaders. That's going to be a big loss for the Pioneers. Justin? And Alyssa Giordano and Kai Adams, they really added a lot of, of course, leadership, but also versatility to the team. Players such as Madison DeLude really stepped up and played a lot of minutes along with Lisa Giordano. Yakira Rosa was also someone who developed big time underneath both Rosa and Giordano. So there's a bright future for the Lady Pioneers. Yeah, and if we switch courts, uh, Justin, we'll keep it you. The men's, they finished at 9-16 and 16 on the season, did not make the playoffs. You know, five seniors are graduating. That's a lot of guys. That's a whole starting five right there. Who do you think is going to take up the mantle next year, Justin? We'll start with you. Well, I am going to have to go with Dominic Mignon. All right, so if you take a look at the stats here, he plays 31.2 minutes per game, 12.8 uh, points per game, and then the field goal percentage, 40 and a half. Um, and if you look at his three-point percentage as well, 27%. Uh, percent. So it shows that he can really score in both the paint, and he's able to score uh, from beyond the arc. Not to mention he has the accolades to back it up. Besides, he was pl uh, named NJAC Player of the Week uh, sometime this year. So he really can step up for the men's basketball team. Jesse? Moving forward, I think we need to shift from an offensive team to a defensive team. Absolutely. The best defensive player is Nazir Fields. He is an absolute menace in the paint. Uh, I mean, if you look at his stats, the 19.3 minutes per game is just a killer to me because this guy should be playing 32 minutes, and well, I expect a, him to he, next year. He fouls year. a lot. That's, 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 a, yeah, that's exactly. the only the, issue I The 2.8 fouls per game, I made the joke on broadcast, Nazir walks into the game with two fouls <laughs> because he's just the biggest guy on the court. Like, if he's going up and contesting well, the refs call it a foul just because of how good he is. Danny? Well, JRD, you mentioned three-point shooting. If you mention three-point shooting, you have to mention Nick Rodriguez. If we could take a look at his stats right here, not the flashiest numbers and points per game, but I want to harp on the three-point percentage. 31%, I expect that to go up with starters minutes. I expect them to come back with a vengeance, coming back from shoulder surgery, uh, from a shoulder injury, and play with a chip on your shoulder. Anthony? I'm going bold here. Freshman oh. Jaden Cepeda. Don't sleep on him. We saw him come into the game towards the end of the year when the Pioneers were kind of out of playoff contention. He scored 11 points, I believe, against uh, Rowan a few weeks ago. He had he would he'd come in, hit his free throws. He would hit some big big threes beyond the arc. He can score. He can play defense. Don't sleep on him going forward. The numbers don't look that flashy. I get it, but that's because he didn't really play that much early in the year. Look for him going forward. Well, we commemorate both the men's and women's basketball teams on the finish of their season, and we wish them a happy all-season. After the break, we take a trip down to the Diamond where the crew will discuss the latest in Pioneer softball. Stick around here on WP Sports Desk.